What's going on, everybody? Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. All right, perfect. So um, this is Mike. Um, I'm going to be filling in for right. Jessica today. Um, she lost her voice over the weekend. So I'm just going to be doing a call. I'm going to be going over just a few pairs. Um, and then I'm going to be talking about the trades from the other week that we talked about the last time I was on. And then I'm going to let you guys go. So today's call won't be too long. We'll be pretty much in and out. So go, let me go ahead and share my screen really quick. Um, give me one second. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yeah. All right. So, um, like I said, just I'm just gonna be going over um a few pairs, but first, um, I wanted to talk about the weekend. So, um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw my story, or if you, I know you guys follow Jess, but um, Jess had a very eventful weekend. Um, she was celebrating her birthday along with her boyfriend's, uh, well now newly engaged, um, fiance. Um, they they, they celebrate, celebrated their birthday together. It was it was a really nice um experience, and I was super glad that um she had me there. Um, so everybody, you can write in the chat just congratulations to Jessica because she is now engaged. Um, like I said, that was a that was a a real a real nice experience. I had I had fun, and also um I got to meet a few of my um few of my I will say trading friends. Um, Malika and Liz, are you on this call? They might not be on here. Um, but well, I, anyways, I got to meet Malik for the first time. So Malik is one of Jessica's um students. You've probably seen her and Malik in a few pictures together on her Instagram. And then Liz, um, Liz pretty much helps with the automated course um throughout, you know her since the release of the course and she also you know um she hopped on here a few times as well um I got to meet them for the first time so that was definitely um a nice experience just to finally meet the people that you know have been in a group chat with me for the last you know year or so um and they were really cool and it just you know it's one of those things where I'm I'm super grateful that I'm around people that's you know doing the same type of things that 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 I'm doing because usually where I come from um, not too many people are are, are like minded like that. So just to be in that environment with, you know, Jess, um, a few of her other students, and just her family in general was just a you know humbling experience. And um, Jessica has such a beautiful family. Even after um, the baby shower, the baby shower is really what hit me because um, just seeing her family, how they, you know, how they're so you know joined together and family based was such an amazing feeling. Um, so I, I just wanted to, you know, share my experience with you guys, because like I said, I'm super grateful that, you know, Jess had me there. Um, we was in Atlanta and I flew out there for a few days and just got to spend a couple of days with her. Um, as you may or may not know, I only met Jessica once before that. Um, I had flew to Atlanta a few months ago and finally got to meet her. But this time I actually got to spend the weekend with her. So like I said, it was just a, you know, super humbling experience. Um, Jess is amazing. So um, you guys, you know, take these calls for what it is because, you know, Jessie does an amazing job and she's been going, you know, um, going through her pregnancy as best as she can. But I've just been filling in where I could just to help her out. But um, congratulations to Jessica and Michael again on engagement. And then also her birthday is in a couple of days. Michael's was the other day. And like I said, they celebrated that. So just congratulations to those. I'm so proud of you, Jess. I'm so happy for you. Um, I didn't, I didn't even expect that, to, uh, expect you to get married at the party, but it was, like I said, like when Malik even talked about, um, once we seen it, we just like, wow, that's, you know, that's amazing. So, um, if you're on YouTube, you know, send some congratulations in the uh, comment section on the YouTube section as well. Um, but with that being said, I'm about to go ahead and talk about, um, a few of these trades here. So, um, right here on NAS. Right here, we can see that um, we are in this overall downtrend structure on this four-hour and this daily time frame. 
Um, so ultimately, I'm be looking for sales. But as you can see here, we have just hit this negative 61.8 TP on our daily structure fib, um, which stems from right here. We had our point A to our point B price then pulled back. Price then hit negative 27, but then ultimately came down and hit this negative 61.8 TP. So from that negative 61.8 TP, we all know that means reversal. So especially being on a higher time frame, such as the daily, um, I really want to watch price here. And also you want to be mindful that since we are at this negative 61.8 daily fib, we could see potential uh, consolidation in this area. So also on this four hour structure from, let me annotate real quick. If it'll let me, okay. Here, we have this four hour structure here. We also hit this negative 61.8 TP if I was to just to draw this fib here. So being that we had two negative 61.8 hit, uh, hit TP um, based off of our four hour structure and our daily structure, that lets me know, okay, there's a high probability chance that we could see price push up from here. But like I said, we are still in this overall downtrend structure. We're still making lower lows and lower highs. So we have to be extremely careful in this area. Um, as we drop down to the one hour time frame, you can see that we had this descending channel type formation here. We had a break. And then now we are currently sitting at like the retest level at this area, this break and retest of this blue trend line here. And then we also began to form some divergence. So if you can see here, we're going up on the RSI and then we're going down on the actual candlesticks. So that's letting me know that there's a high probability chance that we could potentially be buying from this area as well. So for the week currently, I have this small minor structure fit from this point A from here to this point B here. Um, I only have price coming up to this green zone as long as we can break through this level of resistance, this minor structure level of resistance, um, then I will look for price to come up into this area. And then I want to watch price there because like I said, we are still in an overall downtrend. So we can't just assume that price is just going to ultimately like have the biggest buy in the world from here. We just have to be mindful and take it step by step. Once we, or if we break and retest this black trend line, then we could be looking for price to then go and hit this overall negative 27 um, TP based off of this minor structure fib. But for right now, um, I'm looking for price to come up into this green zone as long as we don't respect this um, this low right here in this white zone, which this is a, a structure level. So as long as I'll be looking for something like this, there's a break and a retest to come up to this level of resistance right here. Then we got to watch price from there. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, mine. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes, sir. perfect. Now, of course, I always talk about um, every time I'm on the call that if price doesn't decide to do this and price decides to like re respect this level, then we could potentially be looking for price to come back down to this low to test this low again. Um, we all we always know that we don't try to predict the market. We only react to it. So if you get a lot of rejections at this level right here, this white zone, then just wait for a price to give you a little bit more data before. Um, looking to take a position, but right now I'm looking for a price to pull up to this green zone from here. Um, for gold, let's go to the higher time frames. So on gold, we can see same thing. Uh, we're pretty much in this overall downtrend structure on our daily time frame. Um, we are currently sitting at a weekly foundation level. So I can expect a little bit of consolidation in this area. So we kind of got to be mindful on gold. I'm not too sure of what to expect because like I said, we're at this uh, consolidation level, but we kind of had this like impulse move up. We started to get this correction. So if I draw a fib from this point A to this point B, we're currently sitting at 2078.6 fib level. Um, so I need to see what price does from there, but I need a little bit more data. Um, let's draw down to the smaller time frames. On the one hour, we can see we starting to have a, a little bit of divergence as well, similar to how NAS 100 was. 
But if we drop down to this smaller time frame on this 30 minute, we can see that we had this white trend line. We had a break and a retest of that, but we never hit this minor structure TP. If I draw this from here, point A to point B, we never hit this negative 27. And we can see that we're currently sitting at this level of resistance here, this white zone. So I'm kind of weary to see if price will do something like this, where we respect this and push down to this negative 27 from here. Um, but like I said, it's not super clear to me right now. So I'm not going to give you guys like a full out analysis. Just kind of wait for a little bit more structure to form before you guys look to take on gold if you're not already in it. Like if you're already in sales from up here, um, based off of last week's trade, then of course, then you can you know hold it until the price gives you a reason not to, until this negative 27. But ultimately, um, I won't be looking for a trade on gold right now until we get either a break and retest of this. What's up? Somebody say something? Yeah, sorry, it's Gabby. Uh, it's also around that foundation level, isn't it? Is that your weekly? Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, I had this weekly foundation level right here. That's why I was saying, um, I could expect a little bit of consolidation mm -hmm. at this area, so that's why I'm just waiting on a little bit more data before um, I look for an overall analysis on gold. Gotcha. So, from here, based off of just what we have, though, we probably because if I was to give you guys analysis, um, it would probably look a lot like something like. Uh, let's see here. Maybe something like this right here, which is just a lot of consolidation. But coming up to this black trend line here, price probably could consolidate to this black trend line. And then we would need to see what it does from there. Um, if we break and retest that black trend line, then of course you all know, then we'd be looking for buys. Um, if we respect this zone, then we can look for price to then come to this negative 27 TP. Um, and then we would just have to reevaluate from there. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I got a question though for you, Mike. What's up? Um, so like I'm in that, I'm in that cell from that trend line that you were just talking about that you wasn't sure was gonna make it to the negative 27 or not. And uh -huh. I was feeling the same way, but how do you know if it's going to complete or not or when to get out? Because I don't want to have to like freak out over my charts. Like how would I get out if it wasn't going in the right direction? Um, well, me personally, I just trail structure based off of like the minor structure. Cause I, I'm a firm believer in not giving my profits back to the market. So I'm pretty much just going to be looking for like, okay, breaks of structure on the minor, like the smaller time frames. Um, but of course, like that's one of those things where like, I'm not sure if yes teaches you guys that, but like that's one of those things where like you just kind of know based off of like certain structure or fib levels that where they kind of get out. I think Jessica actually talked about it on one of her YouTube calls. Uh, I think if I could find the video, I'll tell her to drop it in the chat where she talked about like, OK, I'm not going to let price pull back um, past this level um, before I get out. So I'll was, try to find that if video. I, if I can remember, I think she said past the 38.2, but I'm not. Okay, well, yeah. Don't quote you, me on that, but yeah, I, no, I, that was, that was I vaguely was remember. Thinking, yeah. But, um, I just didn't know if that was the actual, if it was on a YouTube video or if I saw it somewhere else. So yeah, uh, yeah so if it was a, like a 38.2 on a minor structure, then I will potentially look to get out. But um, if you are in from up here, then I would like this previous high right here. I wouldn't let it go past that, of course. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Okay, perfect. All right. All right so, so during the trade, are you you moving your stop loss up um, as the trade continues to go past, right? Like you just marked that spot where you wouldn't go back. You're on a higher time frame, 30 minutes. So you would move your stop loss up or you just keep your stop loss where it is? Uh, I like to set alerts because like – Alerts, okay. Unless it's like nighttime where I'm about to go to sleep. But like – because sometimes like price will come to that stop loss and stop you out and then like – because, of course, the price comes here and it starts to reject, then I'm not going to pull it for no reason. You know, like, I'm not going to – if I put a stop loss there and then it hits it, then it just takes me out. So I like to set alerts where I can monitor it, where I see, like, okay, is price going to break through this level or is price going to um, continue to um, respect this level? Make sense? Happy. Thanks for that, yo. Appreciate it. All right, perfect. 
All right, so for gold, um, just to reiterate here, we'll just be looking to see if prices are going to consolidate at this area since we are at this uh, weekly foundation level. And we're also at this um, near this one hour trend line. So we need to see, okay, this price is going to come here and consolidate to this one hour trend line. Then we need to see what price will do from there. Price is going to break and retest to go higher or price will respect that to then continue to go lower to hit this negative 27 TP based off this minor structure fit. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions about anything so far? Um, I got one more for you. So I I have a lot of like I have a lot of trend lines marked off on my chart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I run into these situations where I'm breaking and retesting one trend line. It bounces off and hits another trend line that is also breaking and retesting. And then I'm kind of like at like a stalemate where I'm trying to figure out which way, like which trend line is it going to follow through on. Enjoy smart, effortless commerce. Like you okay. see where I'm, I'm kind of saying? Yeah. Uh, hold on real quick. Uh, let me mute everybody. I'll mute yourself after I mute everybody. All right. All right. Now I'll mute yourself again. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So like I'm breaking and retesting one trend line. Mm -hmm. And then the price follows through off that trend line, which also leads to another break and retest of another trend line. So I'm kind of stuck in between, a, in between a decision on which trend line is price going to ultimately follow all the way through on, like which direction is it really going, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So um, when you get to those type of scenarios, Oftentimes, it's like when you're dealing with a lot of like minor, minor structures. So you kind of got to ask yourself, like, OK, what's the like what's the major structure? Like, what's my overall trend and what overall direction am I looking to go to? Because like, say, for instance, if I go down to like the uh, 15 minute time frame and I have like super, super tight, like trend lines that's coming from here. And then I had some that's like coming here and then like so many like minor structure trend lines. I need you be, you need to be able to like follow like, OK, what's the overall direction? Like we can see clearly gold is in the overall downturn. So if I get a minor structure break and retest of a counter trend that's in alignment with this downtrend structure and I get a break and retest, then, of course, I could be looking for sales. But if I'm getting a structure or a trend line that's getting broken retest for buys, I have to be a lot more mindful because that's going opposite of the overall trend. So you kind of just got to make sure like you understand what's your overall direction and then understand like, OK, I know that if I'm going in the opposite direction on a smaller um, trend line breaking retest, that trend line is not going to be um, it's not going to be like it's not going to last long. Does that make sense? Right. So so basically, like the minor ones are like less respected or more likely to break. Essentially. Yeah, because like Jessica talks about all the time, like minor structure always can easily be broken. Right. OK, I appreciate you. Yep. no problem. All right. So um, let's see here. Let's go to the DXY. So the DXY here. We had this overall uptrend structure. We in this overall daily, which is the red, and then the green is the far. We still in this overall uptrend structure, but on this one hour, we kind of had this break. And we had a minor structure retest that then hit this TP here. And I think we talked about this one the previous week. Uh, we hit this negative 27 TP. From now, where we're at, we're at in between this consolidation level as well. So we need to see if price is going to break to the upside to break and retest to then continue pushing on higher or is price going to break beneath this zone here and then come to this green four hour trend line and of course just like gold if we break and retest this trend line then we can look for price to ultimately continue selling and then that will kind of be in alignment with our goal bias if we break and retest that trend line we'd look for the buys but for the dxy if we break and retest this trend line we'd be looking for our overall sales um so far like i said this one is not pretty much clear because it's pretty much just consolidating on this one hour and this four hour structure so we need a lot more data um just to solidify like okay what's about to happen next 
And that's one thing that you guys, um, you know, just kind of want to practice is like sitting on your hands. Like you don't never have to force uh, analysis or force uh, overall markup just because the market just opened. Like sometimes you just got to wait to see, like let the market give you a little bit more data and then strike. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, so then uh, I want to talk about, it was one of these trades that, oh, this was last week's, well, the week before, I, I think it was, yeah, just canceled last week. So um, the week beforehand, we talked about the GBP, JPY, and this is kind of similar to what the DXY and gold is pretty much doing. Like we had this consolidation. Remember, I was telling you guys that we want to see a break and retest of this black, these black lines. I had put this um, kind of like this resistance and support. And then I told you guys to be mindful of the fake out, how price could break through this level of support. And then as it didn't retest, it could come back in and come back up to these highs. We could see here that price broke beneath this, but it wasn't like a full break. We didn't have a retest. And then price pushed right back up to this blue zone that how we were pretty much looking for and then price had to drop from there. Um, then later on that week, we respected this one hour trend line that we talked about as well, that if we broke beneath this, that we would continue selling. And then we pushed up from there. So now on gold, I mean, not gold, GJ, we are sitting at this like daily supply and demand zone. And sorry for all the mess. Um, but we can see here that the story on this supply and demand zone is that every time price came to this zone, that it did what? Reject. Right. Push down. push down, push down, push down, push down. So now that we're back at this level, there's a high probability chance that we can push down from here just based off of the story. But we need to see and we need to have full confirmations before we just assume that price is going to break. I mean, push down from this area because price could easily break above and retest to go higher. But we looking at the previous candles, it seems like there's momentum, but it's still bullish momentum. You said what? Now I was looking at your, your candles. I was saying that it still looks like it's like bullish momentum. Yeah, yeah. And that's a that's a real like a, a real um valid point as well. Like that's why I say that you need to make sure you have confirmations before you just assume that price is gonna sell from here because, like she said, we just have we have a lot of bullish momentum, we had impulse correction. And then we kind of got this continuation form, but on the smaller time frames, we kind of got this consolidation. So if anything, we could draw up there from our point A to point B here. And then as you guys know what 23.6 means. So you pretty much just got to wait to see if we're going to break above. Honestly, I wouldn't take any positions here for like buys since we're so close to this level of resistance. But we just need to wait and see, okay, is price going to break the highs and retest to go higher? Or is price going to break beneath this and potentially sell back down to this trend line in this blue zone right here? Does that make sense to everybody? I have a question, Mike. What's up? Um, all right, so right there with uh, where it's at right now, uh, without giving any of the course away, you would wait for a break and retest for it go to the 27 or you would just like carry that up there? No, I will wait. I will wait on a break and retest. Because since we at this such like respected zone on this higher time frame, we just got to be like super mindful because like, of course, the story here is every time price came here, it pushed down like drastically. So if we just like measure this um, here, we had 1000 pips, 800 pips, 700 pips. And then from there we had almost 2,000, 1,900 pips. So it's like, I don't want to take buys at that area just because like that's a strong rejection area. So it's, it's better just to just wait to see because like we, uh, we haven't even broke these, this high right here of this four hour like consolidation like structure. So I just want to wait on that just to um, be careful. Does that make sense? I, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, so... Well, let me know if it's safe to have this type of mindset when it comes to like the zones. So you see how you said it has a story and it hit um your zone three times. What mm -hmm. was it three times? 
So the way I see it is, yeah, um, well, I don't know how old you are, but when I used to play video games, it was this game that, you know, whenever you hit the brick or the foundation, it would crack. But the more you hit it until it disappeared, it, you know, it got weaker. Right. So, and the way I look at the zone is, like you said, it hit three times. So I'm looking at, okay, so this foundation is not as strong. I mean, the zone is not as strong as before but again like you said it's a possibility that it could hold but then it's also a possibility of breakthrough because of that bullish momentum right 100 percent. that's that's a very valid point um one thing i would just say is that also like since we're at this four hour level that since we had all these rejections we could potentially see some consolidation at this area like we are experiencing already so like that's why i'm just pretty much just waiting on price to like tell me okay what's what's next like in these critical areas i i really pretty much don't even touch them i just rather just wait so i don't have to deal with the like the up and down emotions of oh it's price gonna break this level or it's price gonna respect this level i rather just wait on full confirmation for price to tell me okay it's price is it is it gonna break this level um once i have full confirmation then i'll i'll strike that makes sense yeah, that's a gap as well too right? Oh, right here, yeah. Somebody else say something? It's also uh, near a monthly foundation level on my chart as well. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I don't I haven't really traded GJ in a while. I don't have my monthly foundation levels on here. Um, but just based off of this four hour zone, I could tell it could be a lot of consolidation there. But if you have hey, your Mike, finance, I got a yeah, Mike, you when you analyzed GJ last week. I guess you said you don't take a lot of the trades, but you see how you said price did drop back down before it ultimately went up to where you said, you know, would have been your TP. Mm -hmm. If you're trading like that, like, what do you look for? Because I'm, I'm looking at your, your actual candle patterns and I see that actually before it reached your TP area, mm -hmm. um, before it reached your TP area, like it wasn't a break and retest when it actually went back up through your zone. So what do you look for if you, are getting in a trade like that yeah so i would just be looking for a little bit more confirmation on the smaller time frames like if i was actually trading this you could see here we kind of had like this baby structure like trend line here that was like a break and retest right here this would have been your entry right here you see that okay so like I would have just waited like at that point in time when I get a markup, it wasn't really clear like, OK, we don't have like a full break and retest. So we kind of just got to wait. But we broke out of this consolidation, we broke this black line right here. And then we came back to retest. We had a lot of wick exhaustion at this trim line. And then we got followed by bullish candles. You could have then took that entry to carry that to like a minor structure TP, which was in alignment with the overall projections that I had. So that's how I pretty much would have handled it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Mike, I got a question. All right, I'm gonna have like, we could do like two more questions and then um, I'm gonna let you guys go so we can keep it under 30 minutes. So what's up? What's no your problem? problem. Yeah, I'll be quick. Okay, so you, you drew those two uh, black lines of support and resistance, right? And you mm -hmm. talked about being mindful of uh, being uh, fooled by the, the fake out, right? Yeah. Uh, so I guess, do you have any tips as far as how in real time not to get fooled by a breakout like that? Because like I've, I've seen that time and time again with my, my, my zones where it looks like it clearly went past it. And I'm, I'm trying to look at the candle, you know, uh, the, the bars pattern, you know, the candlesticks and, and the wicks and everything. And it still will come back and, and break through. If that makes right. sense. So that kind of goes back to like what Jessica talks about when she teaches you guys, like make sure price pushes away and comes back. And then you have like actual rejections, like if price just like gives you like a minor break and then the following candle goes straight back bullish, then that's not like a full break. That's just like you had a candle, then you had like a, a tested candle. Like she talks about that. So um, that's just one of those things where you like kind of just got to be patient enough to see price push away and come back to that area. Hey, Mike, I also notice if it's like diverging before it gets to that zone, it that push usually just fails. I don't know if that's accurate, but I've seen that a lot. Um, I'm not really 
to like I'm not understanding what you pretty much saying. And like if it's losing momentum and then it gives you like that big push mm -hmm. um and usually fails and yeah, that's what i usually see but i don't know oh you're saying like a put one more push down before it go the opposite way right oh uh, yeah yeah all right but um i'll take one more question and then i'll let you guys go mike can you just go back to your four hour please All right, so looking at your chart, I have almost the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where, all right, so I know about the structure thing, but I'm still a bit confused as to where you put the fib because I don't have that fib at the top that you have. I don't have that one. I have the one at the bottom mm -hmm. and then I use um, from the higher high right above the one at the bottom. Yes. Um, yeah, but I would start it a little bit up. Oh, well, you can't see. But yeah, pretty much right there, right? Is mm -hmm. that okay to have it there? Yeah, you can, ha you can have this fit here. But it's, okay, it's, it's a 23.6, so I I just like pretty much, I, like I said, I don't really trade DJ, so I really haven't really fully marked this up. But yeah, that's, that's a valid fit there. So when you have these two fibs on it going in the same direction, is this what they call like a, a counter fib or something like that? No, the one I just drew, this was just like a minor structure, like based off of this minor structure, based off of this push right here. That mm -hmm. was just like a super minor structure. So like, of course, the higher time frame major structure is going to like overrule the minor structures, but the minor structure pretty much will like happen faster. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, it does. All right, perfect. All right, so just to reiterate based what we talked about, NAS, we could look to see if prices are going to respect. As long as we don't respect this white zone, we could look to push up to this green zone from here. Um, and then for gold, we we know we at this foundation level, so we could see consolidation. Potentially, we could consolidate to this trend line, but if we respect this white zone, then I'll be looking for price to then continue down to push down to hit this minor structure, Fib TP right here. Is negative 27. Um, but we just need a little bit more data on that. And then on GJ, we are at this overall four hour supply and demand zone. So we just need to see a little bit more data what price is going to do from there. So I will have Jessica update you guys throughout the week. Um, once price begins to play out, and then I'm pretty sure Jess will be back next week. So um she will see you all next week. And then I hope you guys have a good rest of your week and I will see you guys um, next week as well. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike.